here's my solution to last week's modeling challenge. We'll start by bringing in our reference images, bring in a circle, and change the vert count to 36. Scale out to match with the reference, extrude up to the first creased edge, and then again to the second, and scale in a bit. We can then cut away three quarters of the mesh and check on a mirror modifier. With our knife tool, we can make a straight cut from the second middle vert, select the middle two faces, extrude, and scale zero along the z-axis. Aligning that face with roughly the top of the reference, cut in another loop, and also scale that to zero along the z-axis, and line it up with roughly the bottom of the handle. These faces need to be completely flat, so select the bottom outermost vert and move our 3D cursor to our selection, change the transform pivot point to our 3D cursor, and scale zero along the x-axis. We can then extrude the two topmost faces into the center, delete the interior faces, and make any necessary adjustments. Selecting these two verts and pressing J, we can add in an extra edge and then dissolve the surrounding edges. This enables us to do a bevel of five segments on the inner edge, dissolving the rogue vert, and then doing another bevel on the outer edge. We can then delete this massive end gun face and fill it in with quads. This edge is no longer needed, so we can dissolve that and then run a space operation along the outer edges. Extrude this vert into the center and fill in an end gun and dissolve this middle edge. Selecting all but the bottommost edge, we can now do a bevel with a singular segment, but we now need this large bevel to narrow down into this creased edge. So we can cut in an edge loop along the side, connecting things up with our knife tool and dissolve the inner triangle edge. For the inside, we can inset the face to bound, dissolve this inner edge and subdivide the edge next to it. This then allows us to cut in an additional edge, dissolve the triangle edge, and do another inset, and then turn our attention to creasing the outer edges with a support loop. We can dissolve these two edges, which yes, does make an end gone, but it resolves the topology quite nicely. Do an edge slide along the vertical edge to help crease the outer edge of the handle. Now, due to the end gone, we can't cut in loops around these faces, so we can instead select all of the edges and subdivide them to cut in two additional loops. We can then select three sets of three edges and run a relax operation to better define our bevel. However, we don't want this edge jutting out so much, so selecting the inner and then the outer vert and setting our snapping to active and vertex, we can snap the vert back into place to make them align more flush with the handle, which we can better see once subdivided. For the final hurdle here, cut in a loop along the handle and then use our knife tool to complete the design of the inset. With those edges selected, we can add a bevel with no segments and disable loop slide for a more even bevel width. Using Alt and E, we can extrude along the normals, cut in four loops, dissolving the inner two edges and then the outer two edges to add in a slight fall off to the inset. To finish the inset, we can crease up these edges and we can do a knife cut to continue this edge out and slide the bottom edge support to the outer edge. Finally, to address this crease on the outside, we can simply select these two loops and run a relax operation. And just to show you with a very harsh and unforgiving mat cap, we have nice and clean surface normals with our end gone placement devoid of any lumps and bumps. You can find the full solution over on YouTube where I explain the entire modeling process in much greater depth.